gatekeeper. I loathe elitism. You know, music is for everybody. Art is for everybody. And that must remain true. But that doesn't mean that anybody that picks up a pair of sticks and can play on the drum kit should, in the pedagogical sense, start teaching technique. Hello everybody, welcome to this video. My name is Jonathan Curtis and I'm going to, to make a video today that I didn't think I would make, but it was in response to something I was viewing online just recently, which was a really interesting debate about the nature of teaching technique in music. Now anybody that has ever seen one of my videos before knows that I'm very interested in technique. I've got a lot of videos on my channel about teaching technique and I go into great detail analyzing it to the nth degree and I've, I've sort of made a career out of teaching technique in one small aspect. Now the debating question that I encountered just recently, somebody, a fellow drummer, had posted a video of themselves teaching technique and it spawned a host of responses that were not particularly favorable. And it raised the question as to who should be teaching technique, who has the right to te teach technique and the responsibilities and pitfalls of getting involved into such an endeavor. And as somebody that regularly teaches technique, I thought it would be an interesting uh, discussion. So I want to ask a few questions today that all essentially boils down to who should we trust when trying to learn technique? I've been a student, I am a student in one sense, and I've had many different teachers, all of whom have given me some degree of instruction as to technique, everything from literally how to hold a stick right down to how to hit the drum, how to perform more advanced rudiments and things like this. Now, in my career to date, I've written something like 10 drumming books, uh, including this one you can see behind me here. And this, this is a particularly pertinent one because it deals with snare drum technique. Now, I've written that many books and I, I teach regularly. Does that itself mean that you, the viewer, you, the student, should trust me? No, not inherently. Just because I've written 10 books doesn't mean they're any good. Doesn't mean that I'm any good. Doesn't mean that I know what I'm talking about. Ultimately, what I think it boils down to is does the person teaching the technique have demonstrable ability with that technique, right? Does it work for them? Can they do what they are teaching? Can they practice what they are preaching? And I know this is a little bit of a sort of meritocracy type thing, but maybe that's a good thing as far as musical instrument tuition is concerned, or indeed any form of tuition is concerned. Why would we, t why would we trust advice from somebody that doesn't follow their own advice? And likewise, why would we take technique lessons from somebody that has poor technique or perhaps a poor understanding of that, that technique? Because remember, somebody may be a very good player but not be a very good teacher and likewise somebody may be a very good teacher and not a very good player so what we're really looking for is that balance of both of those the ability to actually do it and the ability to impart that information effectively now i'm not going to name who this drummer was or share the video or anything like that but the 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 technique that was being shown in this video was not bad it was not wrong, nor was it particularly good, but crucially, the information was completely lacking. So it essentially becomes completely meaningless, right? There was no concept, there was no sense of understanding, no sense of asking why or answering why. It was just a demonstration of put the fingers here and hold the sticks like this. And at worst, it's just useless. Now, that's okay, it's not doing anybody any harm, but it's just, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of that person's time and it's a waste of time from anybody viewing it as well. So when you, wait, let's, let's come back to me for, an, for a moment. When you look at my channel uh, and the hundreds of videos on there, you will essentially see two things. You will see either me teaching or me performing. Now there, there is a reason that I have both of those on there because you should not trust what I have to say in my teaching if you do not think I play well, right? If you watch my videos and you think, well, this guy can't play, why would you then listen to my teaching? Even if I'm a good teacher, I think I'm quite charismatic. I think I'm quite confident with my teaching, but that in itself doesn't mean I'm worth your time listening to if you don't actually think I'm very good. 
So there is a reason that over the past two or three years, all of my videos have been focused on snare drum because that's where my career has been focused. So there is a reason that every time I put out a video with regard to single stroke technique, double stroke technique, buzz roll technique, polyrhythms, compositional methods, theory, whatever it may be that I'm interested in on any given day, there is a reason that each of those lessons are accompanied by videos of me performing on the snare drum. That might be just me in this studio doing a rudimental piece, or it might be me in a commercial studio with a proper film crew doing a larger production. But from a business perspective, from a pedagogical perspective, I need to prove to you that the, the material I am teaching works. Because if you watch my videos playing something on the snare drum and you think, wow, that's great, I would love to be able to do that, then you have a good reason to listen to me for my teaching. But if you watch my videos just in isolation, a teaching method, you should be asking, why should I trust you when Thomas Lang has got a video out there or Virgil Donati's got a video out there or I can't remember who the current world's fastest drummer is, but whoever the world's fastest drummer currently is at the moment, why should I just not go and listen to those? Well, yeah, you should. But I've, I've been fortunate enough to study with Thomas Lang. I've been fortunate enough to study with Virgil Donati, and I don't play like them, not just in terms of ability, but in terms of the way they hold the sticks. I don't. My technique is not the same as theirs. It's linked, it's related, but it's not the same. I've been lucky enough to study with Dave Weckl. I don't play like Dave Weckl, and he doesn't play like me, obviously, aside from the gulf in experience and ability and everything like that. But everybody who is a practitioner of the art form a genuine practitioner has something valuable to offer, okay? So this comes back to this issue of trust. What we, we, we are not looking for, let's just go straight to the top and, and learn solely from the most renowned, most famous people in the world. What you're looking for are genuine practitioners who are contributing work to the art form, who play in a way that you wish to emulate or at least learn from. So when you encounter various random videos on the internet or, or teachers out there in the wild who purport to teach technique, the first thing you need to see is how they play with regards to their technique. And if you don't see them exhibiting a particularly high level of technique, you need to be very wary in listening to them with regards to technique because technique is a very specific double-edged sword because if you are taught badly if you are taught poor methods with poor understanding you are you are going down a track that could cost you years to undo and i've experienced this i've been taught good technique and i've been taught very bad technique and over the years i've managed to sift through it and find what works for me which then comes back to this sense of demonstrating what works in the performance videos I have. So when I teach somebody a double stroke roll, if they're sitting there going, well, why should I listen to you? All I have to do is point to one of the videos I've performed uh, where I play a fast double stroke roll. And I can say, well, there it is. Either you like that or you don't. If you want to play like that, Maybe you can listen to me for a few sessions. And if you're not interested in that, that's fine. Go and try somebody else's. But you need to be very wary when the person teaching technique cannot back it up with their own playing. Now, that sounds really elitist, but it's such an important thing. Technique is such an important thing for a musician, especially a young, impressionable or developing musician, that there is a responsibility on the part of the teacher. Now... This comes back to what I asked at the beginning, who should teach technique? Who should be allowed to teach technique, right? Now, I don't want to be a gatekeeper. I loathe elitism. You know, music is for everybody. Art is for everybody, and that must remain true. But that doesn't mean that anybody that picks up a pair of sticks and can play on the drum kit should, in the pedagogical sense, start teaching technique. However, the act of teaching technique itself is a valuable learning tool for bettering one's own technique. What I mean is my technique has drastically improved over the years that I've been teaching technique because my understanding of it has improved. My own ability to analyze and to give feedback and receive feedback has improved. So there is a sense where a young drummer or a new drummer who themselves perhaps is still developing their technique can actually learn and benefit an awful lot from the act of teaching. So it becomes a little bit awkward. There comes, it becomes a little bit of a, 
a contradiction. Because on the one hand, we have a responsibility to the student to make sure the information we are imparting is correct and accurate and practical and safe. You know, we don't want to cause injury or something like that. But on the other hand, we only get that experience through the act of doing it and through the act of learning ourselves. So it's like this old problem that they say new graduates have. They don't get jobs because they're not experienced, but they can't get experience because they can't have jobs. They don't get jobs. So there's a little bit of a kind of chicken and egg scenario and this is why it's ta- I mean, I'm 36 years old. I started drumming when I was 11. And it's only in the past few years, literally probably the past four years, that I have felt genuinely qualified to teach technique. To the extent that I went back through my old YouTube videos a couple of years ago, some dating back, you know, eight, nine, ten years, and deleted them because I was doing exactly what I've described here. I was teaching technique in a way that wasn't very good and I wasn't able to back it up with high level technique. So I hope now that I've arrived at a stage where people view my videos of me playing on the snare drum and they believe I have good technique because I'm demonstrating it. And I am confident that the concepts I teach and the understanding that I have is whether or not it's textbook correct compared to everybody else, it works. I can demonstrate a double stroke roll to a high standard. I can demonstrate a buzz roll to a high standard. I can play the repertoire, you know, to a, to a performance standard. And my videos show this. So it's taken me a very long time to achieve this. And over the years, I have taught bad technique because I had been taught bad technique. So ironically, that revolving sense of progression has got me to the point I am at today. So you kind of have to hope that there's not been too much collateral damage to get here. Now, I just want to finish by saying again that I do not believe anybody should be excluded from any form of the arts, right? I don't I don't want to sit here and say you should not be allowed to teach, but you should. And that's not my goal. What I wanted to address was this really interesting topic of the act of teaching technique and the responsibility it entails. So for teachers, I would encourage you to show a little bit of restraint with regards to technique and really truly ask yourself, am I qualified to teach this? Not in any formal sense, you know, we've all got grade eights and things like that, but in the sense of, am I teaching something to a high level that I am actually practicing at a high level? So to teachers, really ask yourself, is this the best thing I could be teaching, right? I, I, every teacher has a lot to offer. Every musician, every genuine practitioner who contributes to the art form has something valuable to offer. So ask yourself, is this really the best thing I should be teaching? And if you're teaching a buzz roll, let's just say, or a really banal example, if you're teaching buzz rolls, you know, on a video, you know, putting out a video or a course or something like that, are my buzz rolls good enough to warrant this? Is the information I have to impart of a high enough level to warrant me putting out a video on buzz rolls or selling a course on buzz rolls. That doesn't mean you're teaching your seven-year-old students the introduction to buzz roll. I'm talking about on a commercial sense, putting yourself out there as a teacher of buzz rolls. You really have to ask yourself, am I qualified to do this? Because you have a responsibility to those that listen. And I have experienced firsthand people that have listened to what I've said. And in the past, when it's been less good advice, they've suffered from it. They've had to undo that. And it's a horrible feeling. To students out there who look for advice from teachers, perhaps on YouTube or perhaps on discussion forums and whatnot, or even when you seek, seek, seek a teacher, you have, to, you have to be really brutal. You have to be really objective and say, is this person able to demonstrate what I am looking for? So if you're going to somebody to look for technique, you know, I want to improve my snare drum technique. I want to understand rudiments better. Is the person you are paying money or spending your time listening to able to demonstrate that? Or is it just the local drum teacher? Now, the local drum teacher might be a technical wizard, or they might just be an average drummer who thinks they have some entitlement to teach technique, when actually they are completely average. Again, it sounds elitist, it sounds brutal, but from the pedagogical perspective of responsibility, this is what you have to ask yourself, because bad technique is worse than no technique. So if the teacher you are trusting to teach you how to hold the drums and uh, to hold the sticks and how to play a paradiddle and how to play a buzz roll and how to play double strokes, if they can't do it themselves and they can't demonstrate subsequent understanding, 
really ask yourself if you should be listening to them. Is this the right person I should trust? So I think that exhausts everything I have to say on the matter. Ultimately, what it comes down to is you have to practice what you preach. And if you can't practice it, don't preach it. That's really what it comes down to. So there is a reason, as I said earlier on, that all of my technique instructional videos are accompanied by performance videos where hopefully I demonstrate enough level of technical expertise to give you, the viewer, validation that I am somebody worth your time. And I'm very fortunate that many people come to me for lessons from all over the world because they have seen my videos and they've thought, hey, this guy seems to know what he's doing. And that is something I have worked very hard to cultivate. And when you see videos on the internet of somebody random doing a two minute video talking about pinch here and here and hold here and here with no context, with no demonstration, with no understanding of the why and the underlying foundations of what it's all based on, it is frustrating because I dedicate my career, my time, my money, my effort to developing this and then teaching it practicing it and teaching it to the highest level I'm capable of, it is frustrating. So I think ultimately it comes down to that sense of responsibility and practicing what you preach. So I don't really know who this video was aimed for, uh, aimed at. I, I'm very interested in pedagogical approaches and I just wanted to share my thoughts while they were fresh, uh, having seen this debate and having encountered the notion of responsibility with teaching technique. So anybody, anyway, I hope this has been of interest to some of you. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and best of luck in your own journey, whatever that may be. Thank you very much. See you soon.